again, just similar format to what I've done in the past, uh, and probably go through the, uh, the team a little bit quicker uh, than normal, um, since a lot of the information hasn't changed um, from the previous weeks. Um, but starting on the offensive line, uh, the one addition that we'll start practicing this week is uh, Josh Tinnero, who is a junior college uh, transfer uh, from Saddleback Community College. Uh, he got hurt in about the fourth or fifth practice of pre-fall. Uh, so he's been rehabbing. Uh, he has the green light now to come back and play. Uh, so we'll kind of make an evaluation on where he's at um, as far as his ability to contribute on the offensive line. But that is a, a pretty big addition, uh, getting someone back at this point in time. So, um, and then with Eric Berkman uh, being cleared to go to, our depth on the offensive line has become uh, much better than a couple weeks ago. Uh, tight ends, uh, we're still doing well. Um, Adam Feeney uh, will continue to have uh, kind of that cast on his hand, but uh, he hasn't really seemed to uh, affect him too much with his uh, catching ability. His blocking has been pretty solid. Uh, Dalton Morgan really has come on strong, so we like that combination with him. Our fullbacks are doing well. Um, at the receiving core, um, Israel Lamprakis is another receiver that will start uh, seeing where he's at uh, physically. Uh, he's coming off of a knee injury also that uh, just kind of what capability that he'll be able to contribute at some point in time is yet to be determined, but uh, again, it's just good to get players coming back and, and getting in the mix. So that's offensively. Uh, defensively, uh, front seven, uh, nothing has changed, uh, so we're uh, doing well there. Uh, in the defensive backfield, uh, Luke Thuston uh, was the addition uh, last week. Uh, going into the week, we were somewhat uncertain what his contributions would be, and then we were able to use him uh, in the game on Saturday. Uh, he got some good playing time and um, he's, uh, he should be even more uh, ready to play here this upcoming week. So it's uh, good to get Luke back in the rotation. Uh, special teams uh, will stay the same there. Uh, Jackson McLaughlin uh, will be our PAT field goal kicker and Puchalowski will handle all the punting and uh, our return game will stay the same. Um, Injury report, uh, probably the one that uh, right now uh, is doubtful uh, and will be on a week by week will be Victor Craven. Uh, he has some back issues that he's dealing with, so I'm not quite sure what his status will be uh, for the next several weeks, but uh, we'll take that as it progresses. Okay, our schedule this week, uh, it'll be a normal preparation schedule, um, so Tuesday, uh, we will be in Saluki Stadium practicing uh, normal times, uh, normal times for Wednesday and Thursday. And then Friday, uh, we will uh, leave at 9 a.m. And uh, our plans are to practice at Plaster Field at uh, Missouri State uh, in the afternoon, late afternoon. Um, so we have set up the day accordingly and then actually game day um, with the one o'clock kickoff. Uh, we like that, we like uh, those afternoon games, especially when you're traveling. So uh, that's how our week as it uh, looks currently. Where we're currently at, hey, start a conference play. Um, you know, you put the standings up there, there's something I'll show the team. And I think the important column to look at is uh, that conference play. Right now, everyone's sitting at 0-0. Zero, zero. Uh, your non-conference uh, play, I think, prepares you for your conference uh, competition. And the one thing you just don't know is uh, everyone's playing different teams. Everyone's playing, uh, some are playing a lot of 1A teams, some are playing Division II teams. So as far as that true mark where you're at in the league, you really don't know until you get to conference play and you start playing uh, each other. So uh, we're excited about that. And uh, we're excited about our opponent coming up, uh, Missouri State. Um, good football team. Um, the, you know, the thing with Missouri State, and you look at their non-conference record, uh, 
there'd be quite a few teams that uh, if they had that non-conference record, they'd be sitting at 0-3 right now also. So uh, statistically and record-wise, you throw that out, uh, you look at their ability, their talent that they have on the field, and uh, you prepare for that. Um, going through their schedule uh, and watching the film, uh, the Kansas State game especially, is probably one of their most impressive games. Now the score looks very lopsided, but the thing you have to remember is that going into the fourth quarter, the score was 16 to seven. Uh, and they were having a lot of success moving the football up and down the field. They had over 400 yards against Kansas State. Uh, they did some things very well defensively. It just uh, late in the game, things got a little uh, crazy and, and Kansas State uh, took advantage and kind of bombarded them uh, late with a lot of points. But that was a battle going into the fourth quarter and you watch that on film, uh, extremely impressive, uh, you know, especially what they were doing offensively. Uh, they have some weapons. And then the second game against Louisville, another top 25 team, uh, they battled with them. Uh, it was uh, one of those where um, Louisville got their points, but it was something that uh, was over the course of the game. And, uh, you know, Missouri State uh, was in there battling hard. And then last week, I know that was a disappointing loss for them. Um, they had opportunities uh, to win the game that uh, they didn't take advantage of. Uh, they had some turnovers that hurt them. Um, they had a fake punt deep in their territory that didn't work. Um, so it was uh, one of those games that I'm sure looking back, uh, they felt that that one slipped away from them. Uh, so, and that's how they're sitting at 0-3 at this point in time. But from our perspective, as we evaluate them, uh, they're pretty good. Um, you look at offensively, they got four of their five offensive linemen back from last year. So they have good experience up front, good size, good athletic ability. And then their skilled players are very impressive. Uh, they got two running backs that are very talented that can catch the ball out of the backfield. They actually got four receivers that are capable of uh, being that type of playmaker, giving them a big play at any point on the field. Um, you know, the two that I listed there are more of the veterans, uh, Dotson, uh, going into his senior year. Uh, he has some very impressive career numbers, also one of their leading receivers. And uh, they have been doing a two quarterback rotation up to last week, uh, but now Aston Glazer is uh, definitely their uh, starter and uh, he's good. Uh, good arm strength, um, good football uh, sense. Uh, he, he makes good decisions out in the pocket. He, he's one of those playmakers sometimes. He's his own worst enemy. He may try to force a few things that aren't there just because his confidence is very high. But uh, his backup is also another very talented um, uh, quarterback. Uh, you may see them do a little more with the run game uh, with him in uh, as far as his own read options. Um, when uh, Harris is in the game. So that's how they stack up uh, offensively. Defensively, they run a 3-4, uh, very similar defense uh, to what we see uh, here on a weekly basis against our, our defense. And uh, they do have good talent uh, within their, their unit. In fact, uh, you don't really find one individual that really is gonna dominate the statistics. Uh, again, very similar to us, but you'll see uh, you know, a solid front seven that runs very well to the football. Uh, you see a secondary that uh, has been tested, that has done very well against some uh, very good competition. So um, that's their defensive side. And then with special teams, um, their kicker, uh, very solid Austin Whitmer. Uh, he's four for five right now on the season. He's capable of uh, basically anything 50 on in, uh, being very uh, reliable there. Uh, they have a punter, a redshirt freshman punter right now who's averaging close to 45 yards a punt. Um, and then they do have a good return man in Burton, who uh, again, we're gonna have to be good on our coverage assignments to, to keep him uh, contained. So uh, overall, 
when you look at uh, Missouri State, um, especially when you watch the film, um, it doesn't take long for them to impress you. And that's, uh, again, going into conference play, uh, Missouri Valley Conference, throw the records out, throw the statistics out. Uh, if you do too much of the comparison thing, um, you're going to convince yourself of something other than reality. And, uh, you know, what we need to prepare for is uh, the type of team that we're going to see here on Saturday. And it's going to be a pretty competitive football team. Questions? Um, through, at, through watching film and asking him questions, have you decided exactly McCall's fumbles and stuff? Are those just random things that happen during a game, or is he doing something with the ball that he shouldn't be doing as far as holding it? Trying to make plays. Uh, you know, that's the thing there that uh, with, as a running back, or running back myself, and I'd say that not in a sarcastic way, sometimes as a running back, you're your own worst enemy because you're trying so hard to extend, to make a play, to fight for that extra yard, that in doing so, you do leave yourself vulnerable, you leave the football vulnerable. And um, that's the one thing with Mikael, a couple of his fumbles, he was in a pile, he was fighting for extra yards, and you know, he lost the ball. Um, so that's something that'll come with experience. Um, you know, the other point too I made on Saturday night, Mikael, he's really only had one game, uh, a limited game that he played at Iowa. And then uh, coming into this year, we're into game three. Uh, that's his experience with college football to date. Now he's a pretty talented runner. He, uh, he's going to make some mistakes along the way. Hopefully he's learning the lessons here as we progress. And, uh, and actually we're going to address the issue, we're not going to over address it because I think as soon as you do that, then you put a negative image in an individual's head. So um, I think this is something that will take care of itself as he gets more experience. And at the same time, we don't want to put the whole weight of the team on him, uh, relying on him solely to be our run game. So that again, why you got a number of running backs that can carry the ball and, and hopefully uh, spread them. It looked like he, he, he tried to run before he had the ball secured. Just on that last that one. Because it was yeah. wide open on the right for that shot. Oh, that one was, yeah, that one was just being over anxious. Yeah, uh, yeah he took off and, and he was going to turn the corner. Yeah, and uh, again, I don't want to make any excuses for uh, any of the players. Those are things that uh, need to be learned. Um, but, um, you know, that's something hopefully that he will learn those lessons. They're all very correctable. Coach, how does the spread offense at Missouri State differ from the one you saw against Eastern? Well, Eastern was a up-tempo. Um, you, you know, their goal is to run 100 plays per game. Um, right now, Missouri State, I'm sure they have some up-tempo type offense uh, available. But, uh, you know, for right now, it's not uh, quite. They're still averaging 72 plays per game which is significant. Now they finished playing Murray State, who did have an up-tempo offense, and up Murray ended up with 99 plays um, last Saturday. Um, so, you know, that's something that I'm sure we could see uh, them go to, uh, but it hasn't been what they have done up to this point. Given the competitive nature of the conference this year, you know, how important is it to get off to a strong start in conference play? Well, it's, uh, if you want to have success, you got to get a good start. Uh, it's just the conference is too good uh, to uh, stutter, to, you know, you'll get passed up very fast if, you, if you're not ready to go from the get-go. So getting off to a good start definitely makes this whole conference uh, play much, I don't want to say easier, but much more approachable. I know you said Glazer is a talented quarterback, but opponents have been effective, you know, at, at getting to him. And so, how do you take advantage of his inexperience, just you know, given that he's only only played in three college games? Right. It's a, uh, and I, I'm trying to remember the stats that he hasn't been sacked that often. He is pretty athletic. He is pretty mobile. Um, just watching the film, that I mean, he's made some guys that have clear shots at him that he made a miss and he's got positive yards on it. Um, you know, what we're going to try to do is just bring pressure and, and force him into some decision points where hopefully he makes a poor decision and allows us a chance to take advantage of it. Uh, but that's what we do every game. So, um, you, you know, 
confidence. Um, he's getting better with each game he plays. I think his confidence level is very high. He has some very good receivers around him. So, I mean, I think that in itself is um, helps him with his confidence. How much do your guys' turnovers concern you? you know, and, and do you feel like they're easily correctable at this point? Turnovers are never easily correctable uh, because uh, you don't know how they're going to show. You, you know, it's one of those unexpected um, events in a game. Nobody expects to have a turnover, um, and uh, and you just don't know in what shape it's going to present itself. So um, again, you just be careful with the football. Um, you know, there's a couple times uh, on Saturday night where we had a player try to extend the ball for the extra yard. Don't do that. I mean, just make sure that the ball is always secure, that we're not trying to do something that will put the ball at risk. There's some turnovers you just can't avoid. They're going to happen. That's the nature of the game. So you just try to control the ones that you can control. Defensively, how did you do a better job of not limiting big plays? How do you continue to do that uh, when they have some big play receivers? Well, it's, it'll be a lot like the Miami of Ohio game. Uh, we we got to keep them in front of us. Uh, you know, we got to be able to make that open field tackle. Um, you know, they have some talent. They're going to have some success uh, throwing the football. We just got to make sure that uh, when they do catch the ball that we're in position uh, to make the tackle and then follow through with the tackle. What were your impressions of Houston and their two running backs that they use? Uh, pretty interchangeably. They're not using Cooper Falls very much. I don't know if he's heard if he's, they, these two are better. Well, uh, Scott's very good too. Uh, you know, so you're looking at, I think, number one, their ability to catch the football is uh, they do it with ease, and, and then they do have good north south running ability. They have that slashing, make you miss uh, one cut type. <coughs> um, so it's. Uh, they're, they're good. They're good at what they do with that offense. How well do you think your non-conference schedules prepares you for the conference race? Well, we've, uh, you know, we experienced a lot. Uh, you know, I, when I addressed the team yesterday, we've gone through some adversity. Um, you know, the chemistry of the team has taken shape. Um, you know, I think we've gone through some hard times and some survived it. Um, I think we've developed a mental toughness now that I hope is uh, real. Um, and that'll kind of show here down this conference play just uh, you know where we're at but um, I think our conference schedule has prepared us well for the our non-conference schedule has prepared us well for the conference schedule. What do you think the identity is? Do you, know, you think it's still going to be hashed out a little bit because your, your schedule has kind of been up and down like everybody else's? No I think uh, what you saw on Saturday and, and even what you saw the previous week uh, you know I think we have a chance to be a very solid football team. Uh, you, know, you don't want to have a dominant strength where you're only known for one component. You want to be multidimensional. I think uh, offensively, we're getting close to that where our confidence in our run game has, uh, has improved over the last two weeks. Uh, definitely our pass game confidence is, uh, is there. Our receivers are stepping up, doing a good job with their assignments. Uh, defensively, um, there too. Our front seven, I think, is uh, very confident in their play, and, and our secondary is getting a good feel for the defense now. And with each game we play, I expect our secondary to get better. So, um, you know, I like where we're sitting right now. From what you can tell so far, is this the most talented you've seen the conference since you've been here? Well, I'll tell you, you play everyone, but just looking from the outside and seeing how well conference has done against the FBS and uh, you know this is a pretty impressive league um, I've heard people compare it to you know the SEC you know where the SEC of uh, you know one double A um, and I do think there's a lot of that true it, it's it doesn't matter where you're ranked each week you could be number nine and you've got a good chance at beating number one and when you have a conference like that that's pretty impressive you talk about turnovers, you know, how do you risk, you talk about Corey's game, sometimes he's he's throwing balls into coverage, but he has some receivers that can't go up and, and get those types of things. How do you weigh the, those risks with, with throwing a, a potentially bad interception or him trying to make a play for his guys? Well, you don't talk about it. 
I mean, it's one of those where, uh, you know, you've got to have a gut feel. The good quarterbacks, they know when they can push the limit and when they can't. And that comes with experience. And the one thing I've learned through the years, don't talk about turnovers consistently. Otherwise, it's going to be in everyone's mind. You're more likely to commit turnovers if you're always talking about it. Coach, this week in practice, coming off a big win, uh, does that affect the way that you go about practice to you know, avoid a big letdown this weekend? Well, I would hope there's no letdown. I mean, we're not good enough to have a letdown. Um, it's one where we needed the win to get the confidence. You know, that was the one thing we worked hard up to this point. Um, you know, our guys knew that we had ability. It was just good to be able to reach um, that competitive level. And uh, now we got to build upon that. Um, I think we learned some good lessons uh, from the first two weeks. Uh, our theme going into last week was, uh, hey, we've got to take action. You know, this talk stuff is done. Uh, let's go out and show what we're capable of doing. And uh, that was effective for us, and that will be the same type of mentality we got to have this week where, um, you know, talking about how good we are, you know, not going to get us very far. You touched on Missouri State's defense. What do you think they did really do well? Terry th seems to think that they're a lot better than, than last year. Well, I think, you know, I can't pinpoint one superstar. I mean, they're all good. They, they all, I think they're more well-rounded uh, than they've been in years past. They've had some very good defensive players that have uh, stood out. Um, I'd say this defensive squad uh, is just a very solid squad all the way from the defensive front to your secondary. Uh, they really run to the football well. They're very aggressive. Uh, they play hungry. As a defensive coach, former defensive coach, I mean, I'm impressed how they get to the football. They get there in a hurry, and, and they got good athleticism. Do you expect them to blitz a lot? They'll play their game. I don't think they'll blitz as much as we do, um, but uh, you know they'll definitely bring pressure. Uh, you know that is one of the advantages of the three-four. You can bring pressure in a lot of different ways, and, and that's what makes it difficult to preparing for three-four. You're just never quite sure how that pressure is going to present itself. Murray had some quick scores and some, some long drives they did in less than two minutes, three minutes. You know, you think your, your tempo could be something that could, could be good for you this, this weekend? Well, that's, again, part of who we are. Uh, you know, we're not strictly a tempo-oriented team, but we're capable of going into tempo at any point in time. Uh, that will be part of the game plan, and, and uh, you know, it's something that's part of our arsenal. What determines when you go into tempo, or can you talk about that? Well, it's more, again, a gut feel. It's, uh, you know, watching a lot of tape of the upcoming team, uh, just trying to get a feel. A lot of times when you feel you got them on their heels uh, and you just want to take it to them right now and you don't want to give them a chance to recoup, it's kind of like boxing, you know, where you feel you got your guy uh, on the ropes while you get after him. That's kind of when you go into tempo. So, so there are times when you don't want to go into tempo because of certain circumstances, right? Is that it? Correct. I mean, okay. When you do the tempo game like we do, there's times when, hey, you just want to come out and you want a very controlled, aggressive, pound the ball down the field, take what they give you type. Yeah, I mean, that's good football too. And then there's other times where you want to come out and make them wonder, you know, what's coming next. Yeah, your, your kickers have struggled the first three games. Are, are you, how confident are you going for on fourth down inside the 30, or how comfortable are you trying to field goal? Well, three of the field goals we missed, I believe, are outside of 40. Uh, you know, so I'm not going to get too uptight. Uh, you know, the one that I'm probably disappointed at most was the one at Miami of Ohio when we were inside the, the 20, and we missed on that. Um, so it's something that you know we're going to be aware of, but I do feel. Jackson is a very quality kicker, and, and uh, I kind of know what he's capable of doing. And, and even his kick that he missed on Saturday night, he had the distance. He just uh, pulled it a little further than he needed to, and uh, you know, he didn't miss by much. But you know, field goals, it you know, doesn't matter. Coach, I'm doing something on Brian Presume. You know, what, how impressive you've been with him moving into a starting role this year. He, he played a lot for you last year, but have you seen a big change in him? 
Well, Brian's had a good offseason. Uh, you looked at his game last year uh, as a sophomore coming in as a junior college transfer. He was just learning the system. He was just learning uh, this level of football. You know, so he was out there. He was performing. He was getting better, but you really didn't notice him to this to that extent. Um, his off season was very impressive. Uh, talking with Coach uh, McLeod, our strength coach, um, Presume was one of the guys he was most impressed with uh, during the off season as far as really getting after it in the weight room. His numbers. Uh, very impressive. Um, that carried over into a very good summer um, program for him, and uh, we were expecting him to be more of an impact player uh, this season. And so far, we've seen that. You know, is it set on the inside? You ever thought about playing on the outside? Or he was just a really good prognosis for the inside linebacker. Yeah, you don't. There's too much difference between an inside linebacker and outside linebacker. So if we made a move with them right now. Uh, that would set him back, and he's playing too well to make a move. But he is athletic enough where he could be an outside backer, but you don't make that in movement this evening, in the middle of the season. Okay, any more questions? All right, thanks, Coach. All right, thank you.